This is one of multiple videos that demonstrate troubleshooting scenarios in campus environments. In this topology, I have four switches configured. Switch one and switch two are core switches. Switch three and switch four are access switches. Now to keep the topology simple, I haven't got cross connects configured here or additional access switches. In my CCNA course, I show you a larger topology, but for this troubleshooting video, we'll keep it simple. We've been told that PC1 in this network is not able to ping PC2. In this topology, I'm using routers to simulate PCs. So let's test that. Can router one or PC1 ping 10132? So it looks like the pings are failing. PC1 is in VLAN 2 and PC2 is in VLAN 3. Show IP route. Routing is disabled on this router, but it does have a default gateway of 10.1.2.254. So we should be able to ping this default gateway. So ping 10.1.2.254. Yes, we can. Can we ping VLAN 3 on the default gateway? Yes, we can. So PC1 can get to the default gateway. What about PC2? So here's router two acting as PC2, show IP interface brief. We have 10.1.3.2 configured, show IP route. Default gateway is 10.1.3.254. So can we ping that default gateway? Looks like we can't. So there seems to be a problem somewhere between PC2 and switch one. Let's check on switch four connected to PC2. So this is switch four. Show IP interface brief. It's got an IP address of 10.1.1.4, ping 10.1.1.254. That works. That is the default gateway of this switch. So the switch can ping its default gateway. Can it ping 10.1.3? 254. Yes, it can. So we've established that there's basic connectivity between the switch and the default gateway. Let's have a look at our trunks. So show interface trunk. Trunking is enabled on gigabit 00. That's the interface between switch 4 and switch 2. Show CDP neighbors. We have a relationship to switch to, but we've already proven that that works by being able to ping the default gateway. VLANs are allowed across the trunk. Now, can you spot a problem already in this topology? What's the problem based on that single command? Something's wrong. Notice gigabit zero zero is a trunk, but it's only allowing VLANs one to two and four, but the PC is in VLAN 3, so let's have a look at the configuration of this gigabit interface. This interface is configured for trunking, and we're not restricting any VLANs, but we're only permitting VLANs 1 to 2 and 4 across the trunk. Show interface gigabit 01 switch port. What's wrong here? Can you spot the problem? We're looking at the output of this interface on this switch. What's wrong? The port is enabled. It's set as static access. It's configured to use access VLAN 3, but notice this keyword, something's wrong. Show run interface gigabit 01. So the port is correctly configured to be in VLAN 3, but show VLAN brief will show us that there's a problem. Can you see the issue? Where is VLAN 3? So be careful. You can have a port configured in a VLAN and not have that a VLAN in the VLAN database. If that's true, the port is essentially error disabled. It won't work. No traffic is gonna be sent through that port because it belongs to a rogue VLAN. 
This is often the case when VTP is used. If you delete a VLAN on another switch, that update is propagated to other switches in the topology. VTP removes the VLAN from the VLAN database but doesn't take the port out of the VLAN. This port is manually configured to be part of VLAN 3, but VLAN 3 doesn't exist in the VLAN database, and hence the switch port command is showing us that that's an inactive VLAN on the port. That's a problem. So show VTP status. It's configured as a server, the switch, so let's create VLAN 3. Show VLAN brief. Suddenly now, we see port gigabit 01 configured in VLAN 3, and when we look at the switch port, we see that it's in VLAN 3. That looks good, so can router 2 ping its default gateway. We may have to wait a while for things to update, but notice there the ping started succeeding. Can router 1 now ping router 2 acting as PC2? Yes, it can. So we've successfully resolved the issue in this topology. Be careful. A port is statically configured in a VLAN, but that requires the VLAN in the VLAN database when using standard VLANs. If the VLAN is not in the VLAN database, the port is essentially in a rogue VLAN and is not used. Traffic will not be sent through that port. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.